Hi everyone! Today we will look at how to solve equations with fractions and decimals. We have already seen how to solve equations with two steps, with fractions, and with multi-steps, and we will continue to solve the same way. In this first example, we see that there's a fraction in the variable, and there's also a fraction in the number. And there's a very quick way to fix this to make solving easier for us. But first, let's take a look at this recipe for sugar cookies. If we wanted to double the recipe, we would take each ingredient and multiply it by 2. In doing so, we would not be changing the properties of the cookies. Let's suppose we want to triple the recipe. We would multiply each ingredient by 3. We have not changed the cookies. We have merely tripled the recipe. I usually double my recipes because I like to share with friends. Now back to our example. If we multiplied by 2, we would get rid of these annoying denominators. So we're going to multiply the left-hand side by 2 and the right-hand side by 2. Each term, even the ones that don't have denominators. All of the ingredients, remember. So I'll write this step out. So we're going to multiply 2 times 3x over 2 and 2 times 1. That's on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, 2 times x and 2 times 9 halves. Well, 2 times 3x in the numerator will give me 6x and 2 in the denominator. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times x is 2x and 2 times 9 halves will give me 18 halves. 6x over 2 becomes 3x. We have the 2. 2x is the same, and 18 over 2 is 9. Now, on the left-hand side, we could have done a bit of simplifying to avoid all of these steps. 2 and 2 could have simplified, and we could have gotten 3x directly. And on the right-hand side, the same thing with the 9 halves. We could have simplified 2 and 2 and gotten 9. We proceed to solve. We subtract 2x from both sides. We're left with 1x on the left-hand side, plus 2, equaling 9. We do our inverse operation, which is to subtract 2, and we are left with 1x equals 7. Although this method of getting rid of denominators seems like more work at first, once you get the hang of it, it gives you an equation that is easier to solve than the original. In our second example, we have annoying denominators that are 5. So you guessed it, we're going to multiply both sides by 5. Being careful to multiply each term, each ingredient. It's the distributive property. So we're going to multiply 5 times the first term and the second one on the left. And on the right hand side we do the same. I'm going to write the step out. 5 times x over 5. 5 times negative 4. 5 times 2. and negative 2x over 5 times 5. Well, 5 over 5 becomes 1x. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. 5 times 2 is 10. And here we can cancel the 5 with the 5 to leave us with negative 2x. We continue solving. We can do an inverse operation of adding 2x to both sides. On the right-hand side, the x is disappear. We are left with 3x on the left hand side. Take away 20 equals 10. Our next inverse operation would be to add 20 on both sides. This leaves us with 3x equaling 30. And our last inverse operation would be to divide by 3 and we would get x is equal to 10. Now on the right hand side this cancelling we could have done another thing. I often get people say, what? What happened there? You could multiply 2x times 5 and get 10x. And then in the denominator, you have 5. This 10 fifths will simplify to give you 2x. So if you prefer to do it that way, you can. In this equation, we have two different denominators. 
If we were to multiply the whole equation by 7, we would find we still are left with a denominator of 3. And if we multiply the whole equation by 3, we would still be left with a denominator of 7. If you want to see this yourself, pause the video and try it. So to avoid this, we're going to multiply by a number that both 7 and 3 fit into, and the lowest number that that is, is 21. It's the least common denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides by 21. Every term, even the one that does not have a denominator. I'll write these steps out. 21 times x over 7 plus 21 times x over 3 is equal to 210. Now, I'm going to divide 7 by 7, it gives me 1, and 21 by 7 gives me 3. I'll end up with 3x. Now, if you want to see what happened there, you don't like that. You could multiply 21 times x, and then in the denominator you have 7. We know that that reduced is 3x. I just did the cancelling to reduce it faster. 3 goes into 3 once. 21 divided by 3 is 7, so I get 7x. If you want to see how that works, on the right-hand side, 21 times x, and then I have 3 in the denominator, that would be simplified to give 7x. So we have it all equaling 210. We then group the x's. They give me 10x, and it's equal to 210. The inverse operation I must perform is to divide by 10, both sides, and x is equal to 21. In this example, we have three different denominators, 5, 2, and 20. We need to multiply by a number that will get rid of all of these denominators, and in this case, that number is 20. So we need to multiply the left-hand side by 20 and the right-hand side by 20. All the terms, all the ingredients. On the left-hand side, 20 times 3x over 5 and we're going to subtract 20 times x over 2, and that will be equal to 1 over 20 times 20. 5 goes into 5 once and into 20 four times, so 4 times 3x gives me 12x. If you don't like that move, you could also multiply 20 times 3x to get 60x, and then in the denominator, you have 5. 60 divided by 5 is 12x. 2 goes into 2 once and into 20 10 times, so that will become negative 10x. If you want to do that slowly, you could multiply 20 times x. And in the denominator, you would have 2. That would reduce to 10x. And... 20 goes into 20 once and also into 20 once, we get 1. What happened there? Well, if we multiplied 1 20th times 20, we would end up with 20 over 20, which reduces to 1. We then group the x's. We get 2x is equal to 1. Our last inverse operation is to divide by 2, and so x is equal to a half. Now, we will review what happens to numbers when we multiply by multiples of 10. If we multiply 0 0.275 times 10, we will move the decimal point one time to the right, and it will become 2.75. If we multiply 0 0.275 times 100, we will move the decimal point two times to the right. The number will become 27.5. And if we were to multiply 0 0.275 times 1,000, we would move the decimal point three times to the right, and we would get 275. You can see the pattern. Here's our first example with decimals. I know when you first look at it, you might think, uh-oh. We'll 
fix it in a jiffy. Here we have one decimal place, one decimal place, two decimal places, and one decimal place. This means we have to multiply the whole equation by 100 on the left hand side and on the right hand side. Remember what this means. We're going to move the decimal point two times to the right in each term. So that will give us 40x in this first term. The next one will become negative 150 Over here we get 17x, and lastly we get 80. Notice there are no more decimals. Now we solve like we normally do. And we are now at our last example. So here we have three decimal places to fix here, none to fix here, two decimal places here, and one decimal place. So we have to multiply the whole equation by a thousand. That means multiplying by a thousand on the left hand side and on the right hand side. This will mean moving the decimal point three times to the right in each term. That will give us 125x as our first term. The decimal on one is to its right, so we will move it three times and we will get negative a thousand. Then we will get 20x and our last term will be negative 3,200. Now we have no decimals and we can solve as we usually do. Subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos and if you'd like me to create more, like and share with someone who might find this helpful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.